We have nearly 22 million mobile phones in Australia and at midnight a landmark. The CDMA signal will be turned off and in the morning only digital signals will work. Some have decided not to use a phone at all. That might be smart. The World Health Organization so concerned about the potential safety risks of mobile phones, it commissioned a 13 country survey years ago. We've done our own tests. Laura Sparks has the results. I would not want to be a heavy user of a mobile phone. For the first time tonight, one of our country's foremost experts on public health tells us what the world's biggest telephone companies don't want you to hear. I think the evidence that is accumulating is pointing towards an effect of mobile phones on tumours. And we test mobile phones for radiation emissions going directly into your body. Quite often the radiation at the body is higher than what you would experience at the head. The results worrying even the government experts. I think it's concerning that uh, under any circumstances uh, testing would show that a phone does not meet the standard. Professor Bruce Armstrong is Sydney University's Professor of Public Health. He's devoted more than 10 years of his life researching the link between mobile phones and brain tumours. He's always sat on the fence. That's until now. I think people might be shocked to hear that the evidence does seem to be coming more strongly in support of harmful effects. So what sort of harm are you talking about? Well, by harmful, I mean production of brain tumours, acoustic nerve tumours, possibly parotid gland tumours, because you know, some of those tumours are certainly fatal. So why are we only starting to hear about this now? Mobile phones have been here for 20 years. Today we're at saturation point. There's 20 million mobile phones here. That's enough for every Australian to own one. But as time passes, scientists are able to look at the longer term side effects. We're now starting to hear about 10 year studies and the results are worrying. What was found there was evidence of a twofold increase in risk of tumours. Professor Armstrong is so revered that he's been chosen to head the Australian arm of the World Health Organization's 13 country mobile phone study. The biggest one yet ever undertaken. Yet the Australian Mobile Telecommunications Association choose not to listen. Their CEO, Chris Althouse. I can tell you that the overwhelming body of research internationally says quite the opposite. We've been encouraged to use a hands-free kit with our mobile phones for years to ward off potentially dangerous radiation. Now with the advent of the Bluetooth, it's commonplace for phones to stay firmly in our pockets, far away from the brain, but close to other important organs. So how safe is this to have a phone transmitting from your chest or trouser pocket? And it's not always made clear that when you use a phone in your pocket, for example, that the radiation levels are much higher than they ought to be. Chris Zombolis is the director of EMC Technology, the only independent lab in Australia that measures the safety of electromagnetic radiation coming out of mobile phones. He claims most phones pass our regulations when transmitting against our head, but questions the safety of them when emitting in your pocket. The antenna is used at the back of the phone, so when it's used at the head, most of the energy is transmitted away from the phone towards the base station. However, if it's used in the pocket, say with a Bluetooth hands-free adapter, the antenna ends up closest to the body and most of the energy is absorbed by the body rather than going to the mobile phone tower. To investigate, Today Tonight bought four mobile phones. A cheap basic phone, the Sagem Vodafone 226, and then three expensive multi-band 3G phones. The Sony Ericsson W910i, the Telstra HTC Touch Dual 850, and Nokia E65. EMC Technologies used this $1 million robot to test the electromagnetic radiation coming out of the phones in the body-worn position, like a trouser or chest pocket, when the back of the phone is facing the body. Chris, tell me about this liquid here. Uh, this liquid represents the electrical properties of the human body. The phone is placed underneath in contact with the phantom, which simulates the body-worn position or in a pocket position. The radiation comes up and it's measured with this probe. 
The results were astonishing. On the 1800 megahertz frequency band, three of the four phones failed the legal safety limits of two watts per kilogram of body tissue. The Nokia tested 3.35, a result one and a half times above the standard. The Telstra HTC measured 2.46, and the Sony Ericsson was at 2.16. At the 2100 megahertz frequency band, two phones didn't pass. The Nokia measured 5.84, almost three times greater than the safety limit, while the Telstra HTC also also failed at 2.92. The only phone that came out under the safety limits was the cheap Vodafone. These safety standards have been set by world experts and, uh, you know, in the wrong... When, when you use a phone in a pocket, the safety limit will be ex often exceeded. Our results wouldn't surprise Chris Newman. Seven years ago, he sued mobile manufacturer Motorola, convinced his brain tumour was caused by his mobile phone. A neurologist himself, Dr Newman eventually lost the case due to lack of evidence. He has since died of the cancer. I had a choice. I would have never used a cell phone. Um, just because with even the potential risk, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it going through the hell. The mobile phone lobby group dismissed our results. Are they safe? I don't Looking at those know figures. about those particular phones. There are standards in place. They have a 50-fold safety margin. So you're saying that we could have radiation 50 times greater than our safety limit and we as consumers would still be safe? I'm saying that the standards that are set are conservative by a factor of 50. So we could have 50 times more the radiation? The way the standards are written... It seemed Mr Althouse was avoiding the question. But can you answer that question? You're still not answering it. Four times we asked, four times we didn't get an answer. Our results were delivered also to the country's radiation watchdog, the Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency, Dr Colin Roy. A little bit surprising that you, under any circumstances, uh, you could exceed the, um, the SAR. Back at EMC Technologies, Chris believes manufacturers get around their legal responsibilities by recommending a spacing limit between the phone and the body between 1.5 and 2.2 centimetres. But the guideline is buried in the hundreds of pages of each phone manual. It would be fairly hard to, uh, to achieve that spacing unless you took specific precautions in terms of putting something in your pocket that it would hold it away from the body. Mr Althouse denied the spacing limit was an admission of guilt by the manufacturers. No, they're not admitting that at so all. So why, why is it there? You'd have to talk to the manufacturers. Okay, so that's Our government huge. authorities agreed to investigate. So what should we do? Well, it depends on who you listen to. To minimise your exposure, use either a hand-free or wireless device, um, minimise calls, um, use texting rather than voice. It's a popular product, but overwhelmingly it's a safe product. Do you think we should have waited? I think the, the horse was well and truly out of the gate and off into the forest before people even started to think. The Australian Communications and Media Authority says it's an offence to sell a phone which doesn't comply with safety standards for electromagnetic radiation and suppliers can be prosecuted. Laura Sparks reporting.